Hi everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations, where tonight we are going to be doing a spring design. A little bit different than the wreath designs we've been working on for quite a while. This one we're taking and doing something just a little bit different um, on the design process. We're going to be using a couple of design techniques kind of paired together. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. This happens to be a work frame with tinsel ties. It's a pale pink because it kind of goes in conjunction with this gorgeous line, which is a Hello Spring banner. This is from Craft Outlet or was from Craft Outlet. I don't know if you can still find it, um, but we're going to be using a, uh, let's measure this. I want to say this is, it's a little bit bigger. This is about 14 and a half inches. It is a work frame wreath, but it's not the elevated. It's the kind that kind of goes up, but then goes back down in the center, which is per my preferred uh, work frame wreath to use. We are going to be using um, 21 inch mesh to set our base color down. And then we're gonna come in with what I like to call the perfect use for the leftover um, deco mesh that you might have to kind of add in some additional pastel colors. We will add a bow, we will add ribbons, maybe some florals. It just kind of depends on what the overall look is going to be. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to prepare our 21 inch mesh. So this is just your standard white. It's not anything super fancy. I like to drop it below me when I work on it. That way I'm not having to worry about it sliding all over the counter. And we're going to be doing the poof method. Thought it's about time. We kind of use some 21 inch mesh. It gives me an opportunity to kind of use that up so I can kind of get rid of it. I have quite a bit of it left. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just start this underneath on the crossbar and I'm going to do the inside uh, circle which has seven tinsel ties and the outside which has nine. So I'm gonna go in right here. I'm gonna flip it upside down. And I'm gonna go ahead and secure this with a zip tie right to my frame. Let's get this under. And right in here. We're gonna go ahead and secure this down. Um, we shouldn't have any frays because we're securing this first. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our poof method. So this is how I tie on when we're doing a regular poof. Now I'm gonna measure out exactly 10 inches, whether we're going inside or outside, or how close they are. And I like to open my poofs as I go, which just means make sure everything doesn't fold. Like you can see that I'm fighting that fold initially right there. We'll open up our tinsel tie. Hey, uh, I don't think you're presenting 200 stars. Thank you, Anna. We're gonna go ahead and drop this one here. Just do a simple two, what? When this uh, hello from Snowy Kentucky, we have almost eight inches and it's still snowing. Yeah, I've heard. I'm dumping huge on this hill. <laughs> Meanwhile, here in California it is hot as well it wasn't hot today 65 so it's almost what we call our transition out of winter weather so I'm just doing 10 inch poofs all the way around now if you struggle with doing poofs, poofs most of the time it's because your size of your poofs are not consistent so you might have some that are like a true 10 some might be 8 some might be a little bit more. So I just find out if I'm consistent. There's a little bit of green in there. That's weird. Um, it just makes for an overall nice design. And I'm not, we'll do it one, one step at a time. Normally when I, when I do poofs, I usually say, well, we'll see how thick the mesh is if we're gonna do what we call the third row. But then I remembered the overall how I designed this wreath to be, we are not going to be doing the third row. 
Yes, we've got snow in Asheboro, North Carolina. Irina said, sending you snow from Virginia. Oh, thank you. I'm sure it'll be water by the time it gets here, but I will take it nonetheless. Oh, Pam asked, what are the stars going for this time? So the stars this time are being utilized for animal shelter. shelter. So we are donating all of the stars money. We are matching it at 100%. And we're going to be using it to donate to the local animal shelter. Yeah, it's kind of on behalf of Betty White. She was a huge animal advocate and loved animals. So We are following suit. Ooh, Yannette sent 1,000 stars. Wow, thanks so much for that. Yeah. That is so awesome. I'm an animal lover at heart. Can't watch any videos that shows sad animals in it. And the bleeding heart animal lover. That's just where my heart and passion is. So as you can see, we're almost done with our inside. And this mesh is okay. This is not high foil by any means. It's not a metallic. Um, I think they called it iridescent, but I don't see any rainbow hues to this. So I am inclined to believe that that is not true. It just looks like plain white to me. So a lot of times if you have like a generic white like this, um, this would be the perfect um, base to do this particular design on. Um, when I looked at the sign, I was like, well, it's predominantly like a mint green has some purple roses, some yellow flowers, and some pink roses. So let's do the white base to play to the neutral. And then we're gonna pop all the other colors in this design. So pink's already in here, so that's kind of nice. Now I finished all the six on the, or the seven on the inside. So now I'm gonna get ready to jump. So you have the option, you can jump right down. But when I do my poofs, rather than take the obvious, I'll go a little bit more and I'll go off to the side. That way it just blends better. So I'm gonna measure out 10. We'll make sure that everything is even. Because sometimes the middle just doesn't want to be at exactly 10. We'll pull this off to the side. We'll get our full poof in. Give it two twists. Make sure we get everything, because you want to utilize as much of this as you possibly can. I like keeping my edges towards the insides. So as you can see, I'm kind of tucking those to the middle, not worrying about the spacing on the inside. Trust me, we will address that. Measure another 10. See how this is starting to fold over? You don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that they're just a solid open poof sometimes you just gotta redirect two twists make sure we get our edges down open our poofs up just like that grab another 10 and we're going to go around the outside nine remember there's nine on the outside seven on the inside it's a little bit odd but that's the way that most work frames are. I don't understand that. It should be even and even, but it's not. So this one has a grand total of, was that 16? I think nine and nine. Make sure of this, there we go. Got a nice big poof. catching on my sweatshirt. So this is also a really good method if you have a lot of 21 inch mesh and you just want to hurry up and be done with it. Maybe you're just not, uh, it's not selling, you don't know what to do with it, or sometimes it's, maybe you ordered duck and mesh that was a little too thin and so this isn't really going to provide a good coverage. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Charlotte, and sharing. 
Feel free to share on your Dell's page. Thank you, Pam. She sent 200 bucks. Thank you, Pam. Charlotte said, I need an idea for my signed ribbon I received from James Point Door to Court. It's so pretty. Aw, nice. Okay, so these ones have a tendency of taking just a little bit longer. But if you just take your time, be consistent on your method, you can either, before I used to always open my poofs after I got them all on. And as you can see, I'm taking and making sure I know exactly where my tinsel ties are. So for example, I don't wanna get confused with the upper, but I wanna make sure that the next one is ready when I go and put that 10 inch poof in. See, it's already starting to try to fold again. Like the, sometimes you just have to let it go, flip this back over, remeasure, and then we've got a better, a better way to grab that. And for me right now, I'm just using up a lot of the work frames I happen to have. Go ahead and pull this up. There we go. Back down, get our edges. Edges down. Always edges down. Another 10. The edge of this is very, um, what would you call it? It's kind of got a little bit of a grab to it because it's kind of a rough finished edge, not a true finished edge. So right here, I don't know if you can see, it's got little, little top edges and these grab on everything, which has its advantages, but it also has disadvantages in that if you have like a nice sweater on, it's going to grab that. Um, if it has deco mesh, in this case, it's going to grab onto the other deco mesh that I already have. And you can see by looking at this through the overhead view that we're not getting 100% coverage. Like you could look down there and go, oh, I could totally see the frame. It's not covering the frame enough. So trust me when I say, we'll have that all figured out here in a second. Charlotte, yeah, both rows are 10 inch poofs. Yep, I just stay consistent all the way around because I want the height. Remember this one has an upper and a lower. So it goes up, has a little raised mid rail, and then it goes back down. So I wanna make sure that my poofs are consistent in height, both on the outside and on the inside. Okay, so right here is where we brought down our inside. So we're just gonna take it around and just fill in this last spot. So let's make sure I got a solid 20, or not a solid 20, a solid 10. I'm going from like 20 to 10 when I'm measuring. So I see 20, but it's not 20, it's 10. And there's our inside. We'll make sure this last poof, there we go, all makes sense. Make sure our finished edge is to that middle, just like that. And what it does is it creates uniformity in the height of your poofs all the way around the wreath. Now here, I'm just going to cut this last piece I'll show you how much mesh I have left, which is probably just enough to go around one more time. But I'm not going to run this out. So Probably there's that. Send you a pic of a sign and ribbon. Can you save me an idea? <laughs> if I send you a picture, if you're in my private group, absolutely. I can definitely do that. Okay, so look, here's our outside. So now we need to get this back into the middle. So we are going to go back in. 
just pulling this all the way back in here. I need to keep my tinsel on the outside though. Get you back to the outside. Here's where we started. So here's where we're finishing. I'm just gonna put it right here because there's a crossbar right here. I find that if you put them on crossbars, it works out so much better. Just like that. We'll go ahead and snip that off. And then we're gonna trim this up. Not that this is anything to be concerned about, but I would rather have it a little bit shorter. Okay. And then we're just gonna trim this up because this is that raw beginning edge. So there's our start, there's our end. This is what we're left with for our base. Then, Okay, and now we're ready to continue. So what we're gonna continue with, let's get rid of this, is I have, remember I said it's a perfect wreath for leftovers? This is deco mesh cut to 10 inch pieces and I'm utilizing the mint green, the pink, the yellow, and the purple. And we're gonna borrow our bodabra for an extra set of hands and we are just going to curl this, which means all you're going to do is roll it and stick it inside your bow dabber. So we are going to be taking two pastel curls and we are going to be placing these in every single um, tinsel tie location. So these are the colors. We have the yellow, which is more like an iridescent yellow. And then here's our mint green, which is about as close as we're gonna get to that color because it is a tertiary color. So we're just gonna kind of play between the blues and the greens. And I find that my Bodabra will allow me to hold three sets of curls. So that's what I'm stacking this with. because then I'll go around and I'll add these really quick. So I'm gonna do crisscross pattern. I'm taking the, the edges, the finished um, ends, I'm putting them together face down, and these are gonna go in every single twist tie. Just like this, one good twist. There's our little X. So we have pink and yellow, yellow and pink. Go to the next one. Let's, I want my pink one, I'll have to redo that one. We're gonna do green and yellow. Do that one here. Separate, okay. Go over here. Let's redo that pink one. So I try to keep them to where they're only about an inch wide and they're not gonna stay perfectly curled. Your ends will start to look like a funnel. That's okay. There's no way to keep those contained. Good old spring pastel colors. Huh? Good old spring pastel colors. So just like that, here's our inside. We're gonna load this back up, new colors. So this we're gonna do, we'll see whatever I just have them like bunched in random color combinations. Um, I try to do one with every single color out of the four I have chosen. That one. Now we're gonna do purple and green. Folding it. I find if you fold it first, it makes rolling the rest of it so much easier. And we're going to do pink and green. Okay. There's that one. And this one. So now do you kind of see where I'm going with the thought process of why this will be full? 
with other colors that I don't need to come back in and thicken up any more on the 21 inch. So I'm gonna use a lot of my leftover mesh. We all have these, you might have leftover pieces of your mesh. Let's give you one more twist. Go back here. We'll add our purple and green. Taking this all the way down to the inside. I'm not opening my twist ties. Just making sure that you have like different color curls facing opposite directions, which is why I crisscross them. Charlotte, yeah, I've heard even when we were on a private group earlier, there was a couple of gals who were having problems with it freezing up and it, it could just be the weather on the East Coast. It could just be Facebook. It, it's kind of out of our control. There's no freezing on my end that I see, so we're fine here. Okay, so we're gonna do another three sets of colors. This one is purple and green. And then it's gonna be, it's just random how they're sitting in my cart. We're gonna do green and pink. And then we have purple and yellow. So I know I'm gonna get asked the question, how many rolls will you need? Um, super simple. You'll need at least one roll of every color, but hopefully if you're like me, you just have a lot of little excess colors, like just enough on a roll that you don't wanna throw it away, but that you can't really use on another design, except for something like this where you can use different colors, different pieces. So just like this, we'll finish our inside and then we're gonna move to the outside. So there's that. And then we'll drop down to the bottom because at this point it doesn't matter where you start just so long as you put two in every single tinsel tie and that you have them on opposite sides. And this way it starts to add that little pop of pastel color. Let me find my other, this is probably where I started it. Yep, there's my other ones. Just like this. I try to get him down as far as I possibly can to the base of where the tinsel is. And you can totally tell this one was a little shorter on the tinsel ties and like, say something like this. This one's a little bit longer. I don't know why that is. That's just how they wound up on that particular work frame. So if you guys are new here, if this is a first time for you, let me know where you are from and let me know if it's your first time. I'd like to welcome you and say hi and thanks for joining. Hope you all are staying warm. Yeah. And there's no rhyme and rhythm to the colors or like why I picked certain ones. I actually just made sure I tried to make as many even bundles as I possibly could. Just so that you at least had like a purple with a yellow, a pink with a purple, a purple with a green. Three degrees that we're getting three inches of snow and 12 degrees overnight. Wow. Michelle, oh, awesome. She said I did my first spring week yesterday. Me too. We've had wind chills of minus 20. I'm going to spread these out Plus because I just did a purple and green, so I'm going to separate those with these. Okay, there's oh, the one. Hmm? 
So now it looks super thick. Now it's super thick too. See, and then I have like a purple and a pink, so I don't want to put a purple and pink together. So I'm gonna do green and yellow, and then I'll put the purple and pink on the other side where I have that missing piece. Right here, purple and pink. Right inside. Can you the colors or maybe I'll fit something. This can definitely work for baby shower. This could work for Easter. This could work mm -hmm. for spring. Um, what did we say? Birthday party, baby shower, bridal shower. You said I need to order some pastel knife. I have about four rolls left. And then uh, Susan said the rolls that you were doing, were they from a 10 inch roll? Yes. Yes, but they're already. They were already open. Are open and partially, mostly used. Yeah, there's not enough for me to do anything with these, but they're all cut to 10 inch, 10 inch pieces. So 10 inch deco mesh cut to 10 inch pieces. These were all wood burned too, by the way, to get them at their 10 inch piece. That one. We got purple and yellow. So this is kind of like something you can do. It's also great to do something like this um, if you have red, white, and blue. You could do the whole base white and then just come back in and add red, white, and blue, or red, white, red or blue, or red, white, and blue curls. There we go. Let's get this one in here. There we go. There's that one. Pink and purple. And I'm leaving the tinsel ties on. I'm not going to be cutting these or trimming them down because they do match and go well with the colors that I have. All the deca mesh was all from Craft Outlet, even the 21 inch white. So here's our last curl. So you have pink and green or Pink and mint. So even just having the bow jabra hold one curl is beneficial because trying to hold one and then trying to roll the second one is challenging. Okay. Just like so. Take and twist. And so that is now our base that's built. So this is using 21 inch as the base and then coming in and adding in a, a couple, two um, pastel colors that all intermix with our sign. So now I'm gonna come in and we're gonna just focus on the outside um, nine Probably so used to saying the outside 12. So we have a bunch of different ribbon combinations that we're going to use for this design. So we are going to take this rose pattern on the yellow. We're also going to take the blue with like a Dupani blue. And then we're going to take yellow Swiss dot and pair that up with a purple uh, gingham. The two and a half inch pieces are all cut to 14 inches. The inch and a half ribbon is all cut to 18 inch pieces. So these are the color combinations that, and they're just going like, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just that I have three sets of this, three sets of this, and three sets of this, and they're just going to go in and stagger. Now, the solid yellow, Two and a half inch is from Kringle Designs. 
The purple roses are from a craft outlet. So let me go ahead and put these in first. We're gonna start with a, a two and a half inch piece. And as you know, that purple and yellow are complementary colors. They go extraordinarily well together. So we are just going to wired edges together, come up about two inches from the top and pinch in. We're gonna go ahead and place that right inside our tinsel tie. We're gonna go ahead and open up the loop and then we are going to fan out the tails, gotta get it under this one, so that you have these really nice ribbon tails that are all gonna go on the outside of this design. So we're gonna spin this around. This is our challenging one, because this one we only have, this is our short one, but we're gonna make it work. We're gonna go Another, in. Yeah, when, uh, you missed the beginning. So yeah, she started with uh... A white base and it was a hoop design with 10 inch uh, space between our hoops. There's that one. Um, so the green Dupani ribbon, this here is from Craft Outlet. And then the blue with the flowers, the yellow and pink flowers, is from Barton and Barton. Susan, yeah, if she wasn't using a work frame, then she would just use a Dollar Tree mm -hmm. frame and do the same. You could do the exact same design. Design, same pipe cleaners layout. Yep, I wouldn't change anything. I just happen to have this one. I think this is like one of the last pastel work frames that I have, so it was the only reason I chose to do this. Number one also is just to vary that. You know, we've always done Dollar Tree 14 inch, but you could totally do this design. It would look very similar to this. You're still gonna have the same height. There's no difference in height between doing it on a work frame. So the purple gingham is craft outlet, and so is the yellow Swiss dot. So we're just giving them little pops of color couple twists. Just open that up. Right side one of your tails. And then you want to make sure you pop that ribbon tail underneath. So they lay nice. Nice and pretty. There we go. I just thought the, the blue mint green looked really well with the mint green. And this is one of those things where you're like, should I do all pattern ribbon or should I do some pastels with some um, pattern uh, floral pants? Should, you know, where do you stop? Where do you, you know, should you mix and match patterns with florals and prints and solids? And the answer is yes, you can do all of them. So I just thought we would pop a little bit of the florals in our ribbon, because that's what's in our sign. Keep spreading, going all the way around. And because I'm working with nine tinsel ties, I decided to go with three of each color, because it just divides well when you have three. You know, you're doing it in units of three. Otherwise, it would just come out odd. You know, if you just did two, two and a half, and then two inch and a half, you would have an extra. And see, we made that one twist tie work, even though there was barely any twist tie. To use. Okay. 
This one just has like a little bit of a frosted sparkle to it. Reminds me of sugar. Like frosted sugar. Open that. What do you guys think of the combinations as we go around? Do you think um, we paired it well? Yeah, I, I always say we. <laughs> like, yeah. um, like it's you and me. Like <laughs> we collectively came up with these colors. Uh, one of the tail lengths are probably the same, 18 inch for the inch, inch and, and a half. half and 14 for the two and a half. You have the paper. Yeah. Oh, you have it sitting up here. That's okay, yeah. That's okay. Yep. Everything stays the same just because I'm doing a poof with curls. So I don't want it to be like over the top crazy. I still wanted to be able to see the white. Still wanted to be able to see all those fluorescent curl colors. Or not fluorescent, pastel colors, mm -hmm. metallics. Oh. I'll try to give them at least two twists if I can. Be surprised at how sometimes I don't know how it happens, but um, they will work themselves out. Okay, last one for our ribbon tails around the outside. Haven't decided if we're going to put them on the inside yet, so I didn't cut any. Um, I do have florals, some um, roses in different colors, like um, baby miniatures that we might add to various places around because our sign is a banner sign. It's a little thinner, not quite as thick. So we might have little pockets where, I don't know if the curls would be enough peeking through, but it brought out enough that if we wanted to try different things, I had all my supplies here. Okay, Just like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our bow started. Just gonna step this off to the side, grab all my colors. Okay, back to our bow dabra. I'm gonna start with the yellow. So this is what a 50 yard spool looks like. This is from Kringle. This is how I like to buy most of my solids or my favorite colored ribbon in the biggest rolls possible. A, it saves me having five of these to the equivalent of one of these. And these just go on a top shelf in my craft room so I can see all the colors. So we're gonna start this at 10 inches. So 10 inches in, and then we're going to twist. Right where we've twisted it is where we're placing it in the bodabra. Then we're gonna kinda of go up and over, twist again, and we're gonna hope for five and a half inch loop. So I'm placing it on the 10, stretching this out. This is like six and a quarter. So we're gonna bring that in. There's five and a half. Flip it over again. Gorgeous, the colors are perfect. Oh, beautiful, I love it. I'm trying to think like what is my favorite theme wreath to do? Like spring's okay, it's not my favorite. I think I like the brighter colors over the pastels. Mm -hmm. I would do four of those. You're just brown. You have like a particular color. So to do our 
dovetail or ducktail fishtail ribbon. You're going to take your wired edges, you're going to bring those together, and you're going to cut from the folded side down to that wired point. So depending upon how deep you want your V is how high up on the ribbon you come, but the destination point's always the same. And I like mine pretty deep. So there's that one. Stop these here. And then we're going to do the purple gingham. Oop. Purple. Kind of. Oh, that's right. Now we have the blue. I was like, why am I only have three inch and a half? Because they want three, two and a half. Okay, nine and a half inches is where I'm going to come in. And this is going to be five inch loops. Make sure I don't lose my pins. Same thing, twist, push them down, measure. We want these at five inches in. Same thing here, five inches in. Make sure we're right at almost five. There we go. And then nine and a half inches out. Do our dovetail. This one's done. There we go. And we'll do our blue dipani. It's just such nice textured ribbon all the way through. This one's going to be nine inches in, twist, and this is going to be four and a half inch loop. So let's see how close we got. Four and a half. Flip it over. Do another four and a half. Mm -hmm. I always want to be extra generous when I have larger width ribbon. But we stopped it at four and a half. Just about out of this. Don't know if we'll find more or not anymore. Sometimes ribbon's hard to find. Okay, I think I am going to have this one stop on the blue on the outside. I just like the quality of how this looks. Plus, it's going to pair well with our sign for it to be closer to the outside. So, I'm going to take our purple and then we'll do our yellow. And I don't know why it curls like that. That's not how it is on the spool. This is how it comes off the ribbon roll. Drives me crazy because I want to like iron it. So we're going to do eight and a half inches. Twist. We're doing four and a half inch loop on this one. So the same as our blue. So remember, you can put your fingers in both and then pull to measure the top one, since we already measured the bottom. Okay, but we do need to measure the outside. And we want to stop this one at eight and a half. Just an accident rule, do you usually use six different ribbons on each wreath? Usually. Sometimes I do. I've yeah. done seven. I've done eight. I think one time I did 11, <laughs> which was crazy. But it wasn't like 11 in the bow. It would be like I did six different ones on the outside, and then I think I did like five on the five different ones uh, mm -hmm. in the bow. So it just depends. This one I could have easily done 
you know, different ribbon around the base and then built the bow totally different. Mm -hmm. Same colors, just different patterns. So this one's eight inches for One the tail. One thing probably goes on here, if you guys are using your Wi-Fi and you guys are using like a, a, a company like Dish or something that's like Cox or Satellite, if you're getting a lot of snow, your satellite might be filling up, filling up with snow and that's what's causing everything to pixelate and freeze. Mm -hmm. You have to dust those dishes to, off. Yeah, you have to get like a broom and, and broom it off. Push them off. I remember we had that happen one year and we were like, oh, that's what that cut. That's what that does. I'm going to fix that cut so it's a little more even. So this was four inch loops, eight inch tail. And then the last one is going to be seven and a half inch for the tail and three and a half inch for the loop. Feels like a waiter, like I'm sticking those all on like a serving tray. Just makes it much easier to take back to the craft room. Okay. So, last one. Okay, seven and a half is what we said. With three and a half inch loops. It's gonna be pretty small loops. That was like, there's three and a half. Make sure, three and a half, and back out. That is true, uh, Michelle. What's that? She says, my husband says to spray your dish with pan in the winter. Oh, so it slides off. It does. It helps to slide off. It helps to melt that off. Yeah, what happens if it's in a location where it's not easy? Like you have to go out there with a step stool. You can use some sort of long stick and just kind of knock it out. Okay. So this one's finished. Let's get a pipe cleaner. Let's go with purple. I had purple and pink. Maybe pink. Let's do pink. Closer to the top. Okay, so we're going to lift all this up. Secure it with a pipe cleaner. Go ahead and get a good couple twists on that. Grab our bow board for fluffing. Okay. So this is a 24 inch by a 24 inch by one inch thick. I just had this custom made just because I thought sometimes when you're taking pictures of bows, they look so blah until you put them on like a presentation board. But this is my fluff board, so it allows me to separate my ribbons first. So we're separating loops from tails. So we did loop or tail and loop. Go over to the other side, and we're gonna put the loop over here and the tail over here. This way they're directly opposite from each other, so that every time we bring another ribbon down, we're gonna go opposites. So if you lose track, look at what you started with on the top and remember that you're gonna go opposite. So the tails go across from each other and the loops will go across. And then they're separating in colors all the way down. So there's our blue, here's our blue, we're going to go with our purple and our purple, going back to yellow, and then here's yellow, finish off with blue, and then blue. And then once you have everything separated, now you can kind of decide and play, do you like where all the layout is on the colors? You know, you can make sure that your ribbons 
you know, or, or lining up where you want them to line up. You know, do you want the yellow like that? I like, kind of like it having the purple kind of peek in between those. And then I'm gonna have the blue kind of be down here between those two, between the yellow and purple. And then I'm going to move this over. I'm going to pull my purple under here and my yellow under these. Okay, so I'm going to do the same over here. Here's my purple, blue, and my yellow. If you want to move, your tails around. I have a tendency of kind of keeping my tails all to this, like one location, but you can bring them down and incorporate them into your ribbon mix. It just honestly depends on what type of design I'm creating. Like if I need to have, you know, a, a space for a sign and I don't want my loops or the ribbon tails to impact that, I might just focus, you know, loops all on one side, but you don't have to. So, okay, and if you want to put your um, curl back in them, you're just going to run your fingers right back in them, and that'll kind of put a nice little curve in them. blue. It's a little easier to do the, the ones at the very, very bottom when they're actually on the wreath, but there is your ribbon or your bow for this particular design and see how well the board presents that look very mm -hmm. well. That's why I had it created so that if I took a picture, it looks nice. It looks staged. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pop this off the same way. We put it on. There we go. Move this. And then we will grab our design. And how did you come up with a fluff board? How did I come up with a fluff board? I wanted something that was flat. So like everyone could build your bow here, but what happens is how do you hold it while you're trying to organize and get everything squared away? So I told Steve, it'd be nice if you made me something flat, large, right. with a hook in it, that I could hook and it would hold it and then I could just pull everything around. There's other crafters out there that use fluff boxes, but they're too high. Yeah, I like them low profile, I guess, right? So, um, this is the way our sign's going to look. So you can see how having these little ribbon curls just allows you to kind of curl them in and around. So now we have to decide, do we want the bow at the top? Do we want the sign at the top and the bow at the bottom? Well, that's where you kind of have to come in and play. I'm just pushing the, um, the twine below so I can kind of see how I want it to look. And we'll kind of come up here. And let me see what I think. I think I kind of want it along the lines like that. Maybe bring it down just a touch lower, but something along the lines like that. Can you guys see that? So that's what I'm thinking. So let me go ahead and get the bow anchored. Now this might pose a challenge because it's so high and I only have, let me find my pipe cleaner. I only have that much, but we can remedy that problem really easy. Oops. I'm gonna use pink. Babe, can you grab me another pink pipe cleaner? So I'm gonna flip this up. 
and I'm going to make these just a little bit longer. So I'm just going to wrap one around the other so I have plenty that will reach the other side. So just like that. Okay, I have two purple. I need them for my sign. I actually had a purple and a pink, but I need another pink. Uh, not the pale pink, the not the hot pink. I have like all these colors. Oh, you brought me two, the darker one. Yeah. So we're gonna do the same thing here. This way, it just gives me. I know for a fact. I don't have to pull it so tight, collapse my bow to try to get this to anchor. What are you looking for? Uh, the sign is from Craft Outlet. Don't know if Craft Outlet yeah. still has it because I bought it a while ago. So I usually buy most of my t materials for my designs about six months out. So let's see, I kind of liked the way this was going. So we are going to go in here. So I'm gonna kind of go right about in here. So we'll see. Let's see if we can get that down. I got overly long pipe cleaners. It's easier sometimes just to fish your hand up so you can grab it and then just pull it down to the frame. Let's do it here because you want to make sure, like I'm trying to get that middle bar that we had. So I'm trying to get everything to lay flat. So as I'm pulling it down, I'm keeping my hand underneath so I don't collapse my ribbon but that it'll allow me to kind of move curls out of my way so that my bow can sit where it's supposed to. Okay, so let's just give it a couple twists and then we'll look at placement of everything before we tighten it down permanently. Got a lot of cat tails cascading different directions. There's that, that, that. Spin this around. Okay, this is where I wanted my tails to wind up. So I kind of want the yellow. Under. Oop. Open, open, open. Now, we're going to go ahead and remove the twine off the back of my sign, like that, and that. We're going to use two purples, should be enough to go all the way down. I'm going to put these in the exact same spots. We're using a staple gun, and my cats are going to leave because they're paranoid I'm going to shoot them with my staple gun. Not that I ever have, never have shot them with a staple gun. I don't know why. It's the click this, that the ever so soft click. If I just hang it up in my craft room, they take off running. I don't know why, but they do. So I always give them a twist so that way I don't accidentally pull my um, pipe cleaners from out underneath my sign. So I'm just going to kind of move some of my little curly cues so they're not flattened. So I'm going to take this one right down to my frame. So it's right here. How convenient. And I'm going for the high middle bar. So let's 
push that. I'm just kind of getting them set so they go in between. I saw said the same thing. Her staplers are there on her dog. Bolt. Bleed? I don't know why. Like I said, we don't shoot them with a the staple gun. They're just a the nice thing, I I guess. I'm just going to pull some of these out over here. So I want it to sit like so. If I push these two over, I think that will give me a better look. Because then I can have them up and have these out. And then I can get this to go down. Trying to get these to fit. I can feel the bar. It just happens to be on the same shared space with my tinsel tie. So I got to go through multi layers of my deco mesh. Okay, let's push. I'm going to go ahead and lightly secure this one. And then let me get everything situated. So it'll all stay where it's supposed to. Some of these, some of these, you need to lay down a bit. There we go. Sometimes you just have to make them little homes. Like this one underneath is just crowding this space. Okay. I don't want to impact my sign. So keep that one there. There's that. And so now what I want to do is in here, in these little areas here, so I want to add just a little bit of um, oil just to kind of take these and incorporate that. Because we don't have ribbons here, we could add more ribbons. Let me, let me look at two different things. So, let's look at, first of all, what these look like. Cut short. And sweet. Thank you, our love and lights. These are ranoculus, which I have purchased from my favorite Amazon. Just like these. And I think I like the way that looks. Just adding to get the leaf to go there. Just a little bit of the coral in and around our sign. So let's look for a darker pink. And I'm going to grab another short stem. That one has leaves on it, so let's go. I always like to push everything not all the way up to the top. It never fails. You always get the one back on. Then the green. Then this. Then the end. But you want to get it up towards the top. Like that. So when you go to trim it. Thank you, Jane, for sharing. have these in here. This was a little too long. Okay, I'm trying to get my two ranoculus to separate. There they go. So you can pull those apart. Have those there. Take 
One more set, not too far. Another pink rose. We can push this one all the way up. Utilize some of the greenery. Put this in. I'm placing them before deciding if I want them to stay there or I want them, I think I want another one right here. So pink roses, Michael's, the little white ranunculus is from Amazon. And they come in bunches just like this. Are you using those Mozado clippers? No, I'm just using my regular clippers. Just the big ones? Mm-hmm. I'm going to use this one. Those covers came from Hobby Lobby. They're actually pretty old. Yeah, I'm supposed to be switching them out, but I haven't yet. Because I use them for everything I'm probably not supposed to originally created them for. <laughs> but I'm kind of liking... That. What do you guys think? Because you can see it from a different perspective yeah. than I can. So we still have curls here. We still have our curls down here. I think I like that. What do you guys think? This will be actually over. I have them just kind of sitting in between and around our curls, like so. What do you think, Sue? Yeah. Okay. Are you just saying that? No. Do you not? I don't know. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. It was a very pretty lens. I love it. The nest nice looks beautiful. The reason looks beautiful, so. Okay. Well, then, what you need to do is you've got to Number one, when you're gluing, is making sure that all of your greenery is pushed as high up as it can go. You add your pink, and then you want to trim so that you're working with roughly the same. Let's get this. So I'm going to hold them. What happened to my glue gun? It is on. It, oh, it's not all the way in. There we go. It's always that awkward stage where your glue stick won't quite feed through. But I need to get the bundle glued together. And then this is all going to slide together to adhere to my mesh, just like that. Cause glue and mesh, best friends. So just like this. Mm -hmm. Everything is as tall as it should be. Although I did cut my, my pink rose stem a little too short. So let's just glue this. And then I'll come back in and add the rows because it has to sit in a little higher because I snipped it too low. So I'm going to have them sit there. I'll glue my stem of my rows. And this is going in here. Just like so. Not only that, the flowers will help support the sign and keep the sign from wobbling. Mm -hmm. Even everything up. Keep your fingers out of the way of the hot glue. This would have done really well for the skillet, but just to glue these little bits into our um, design, it's a lot. Like, there's no need. I'm going to put my longer ranunculus down below and have these there. 
Okay, last little bunch right here. You can do the exact same thing. You can go with a short bunch of white if you want to come back in and add your pink. They're just going straight in here. I always put the longer one out and away from your sign. And then we come straight in the middle with our pink, just like that. How pretty is that? Just like so. Mm -hmm. It's entirely up to you. If you want to come in, you could add more florals, but generally I try not to overdo it because there's already so much in here between the curls, the ribbons, the flowers. You could come in and add a smaller because the ranoculus come in white. They also come in pink. Let's see what these look like. They just plopped. What do you think? Well, white. Huh? Did you see where I put it? Mm -hmm. What? Dealing with something. You're dealing with something? Yeah. I like the pink, but I think it needs some leaves. So. Mm-hmm. Are you still dealing with stuff? Nope. Nope. I'll tell you after. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, that's awesome. With the flower in that's the center? Cool. Yeah, I love it. I think you're just saying that. No, I like it. I think he's just saying that. No, I like it either. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to go pretty short. Nadja, I said, first time I see you, and I love what you're doing. So it's always interesting when you put floral in your bow because it's easy to look at it this way. But when it hangs on the door, it hangs vertically. Right, Kathy? She said the same thing. Love it. It would be perfect for Thursday, too. All you have to do is switch out the sign. Mm -hmm. You could. Yeah, if you made it to where the sign was easily able to be switched. Absolutely. I'm just trying to get my ranoculus leaf to lay flat. Let's snip this off. Put our glue on the end. And we always got that one petal. Okay, there we go. All right, we are officially done. Done, done, done. I will take pictures and get these posted for you guys tomorrow so you can see what it looks like in the daylight because right now it is, um, like when I look at the colors here, I'm seeing bright, vivid purples, but it's not. It should be lavender. Um, so I want you guys to see the true color of what this design looks like in the day. So um, thank you guys for joining. And uh, don't forget, if you guys want to join the private group, our doors to open enrollment close January 31st. So get in. Right now is a great time because we're doing Back to Basics, which is always a great and popular class. Um, and you can do that at castcreationsandmore.com. And other than that, I will see you guys next time where we're probably going to be doing an Easter design. All right, everyone, have a great night and uh, have a blessed work week.